Hey, Billy, you know what's awesome? What's that? The villains. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So, if you read Shakespeare, because we're a high-minded podcast. Hmm. The villains were people you didn't want to be. They, right. they were really bad people. Yeah. You, you, you didn't want to be around them. They, they were horrible. And Shakespeare made a whole lot of money by making perfect villains, by making villains the people you didn't want to be around. And then, like, several hundred years later, here comes George Lucas. <laughs> 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 so anyway, welcome to the What's Awesome podcast. <laughs> We're going to talk about why we root for the bad guys now. Yeah. Uh, because it used to be bad guys weren't something that you rooted for. You 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 ran away from them. You really hoped your hero was able to kill them. You didn't care about their backstory because whatever backstory they might have was irrelevant. They were just some, some mean sons of guns that you wanted stabbed in the face and dead. <laughs> so they, they were no longer bad guys. And they're just taking a dirt nap. <sighs> How you doing, man? <laughs> I'm good, man. Good. It's a uh, it's another quarantine kind of time. It, it still is. I, if you would have asked me how this was going to go, if I had a bet, it would not have been like this. It was. Well, it, yeah. there, were the, there, there might have been, you know, people with guns and gas masks in the street. There might have been, but. People arguing about whether or not they could get a haircut was not on my list of things that was going to happen during this this global <laughs> pandemic of like <laughs> it's just I, I imagine people in the Black Death. Well, they're what? like, well, my dad's leg turned black. Can uh, <laughs> like the the sheriff's like, but the bakeries are closed. Like, thou shalt not have bread. Right. Like, Wait, what? How does yeah. this work? You can go you can go to Wendy's, but they're not selling hamburgers anymore. So, you know, it's just like, uh, what why do you go to Wendy's if you're not going to get a hamburger, right? I mean, it's 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 bizarro world. Yeah. It really is. Like yeah. you it's like everything's spilled backwards and everything that is is different than it was. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. So that's why we started this here podcast yeah. because there, there was a time, call it the 70s, 80s, 90s, aughts, whatever, because there, there, were, there was awesome things across all of those decades. I was I was born halfway through the 70s, so I can't really speak to the 60s, except for Jimi Hendrix is awesome. Um, there's a lot of awesome that came out of the 60s. I wasn't oh, yeah. there, but we'll talk about it at some point. <laughs> <laughs> um, but today, we're going to talk about the bad guys. The villains, yeah, and wh why we why we want to dress up at those guys as those guys and go on Halloween and be like, ah, oh, I'm the bad guy. <laughs> I mean, even when you think of it as when you're a kid, I mean, uh, you played cowboys and Indians. Well, somebody had to be the Indians, right? And <laughs> most times, kids wanted to be the Indians. Um, Some, yeah, sometimes sometimes they got they got elected. Right, <laughs> like, you're, uh, you're gonna be the bad guy. <laughs> dress, dressing up like a pirate. For Halloween, dressing up like a vampire or any of those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny how even as a kid, there's something that pulls you to the dark side, right? Exactly. <laughs> well, we're going to get started with this in just a couple minutes. you got to give us a chance to get our notes together. In the meantime, take a listen to this message from our sponsors. Whatever whatever sponsor it is, because we're we're live now. These, these are our editors, our producers that cut these things in. So buy whatever product or service that that is on in the next in the break, and then we'll see you on the other side, and we'll tell you it's still good. <laughs> um, <laughs> hopefully, it's not asbestos though, because that's not good. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you in a minute. The big guy with the muscles. You're He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. Skeletor is his enemy. He-Man, He-Man. Here's He-Man, Skeletor, and Castle Grayskull. You have to put the castle together. You're doomed, He-Man. Oh, yeah? 
Watch this action, Dad. Now I have the power. He-Man and Skeletor each sold separately. Castle Grayskull also sold separately from the Masters of the Universe collection from Mattel. All right, so... What's your first memory of the of the bad guy? Like not not the bad guy that you wanted to be, but the bad guy that was bad. And you didn't you didn't want to be that guy. Um, I, I'm I'm gonna have to go. You you were kind of saying it earlier with the Lucas thing, but the one that really stood out to me was probably Vader back in the day. Uh, I would have been a whopping seven years old at that point. Now, <laughs> my heroes were a different level because you had Bruce Lee and all these guys, but they didn't really have villains, right? Like you're straight up bad guy villain. So I would have to say Vader is probably that first, you know, that's the bad guy, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's, that's probably where it started for me. I'm, I'm going to have to say the same, like just full, full black with the cape. Yeah. The just no mistake. Not <laughs> what, whether or not he's got the, the breathing apparatus, you just know, when you see him, that he's up to no good. Yeah, there's just, like there's no there's no getting around this guy. He's he's not a nice guy. Um, and that's what I said in our in our pre roll is that prior to probably Vader, like the bad guy was just somebody who was going like he he may be sympathetic, but. Nobody rooted for the bad guy. Right. Nobody wanted to be the bad guy on Halloween. If you were going to be the bad guy, then then you were either kind of parroting the bad guy. You were like, okay, maybe you're a vampire. Like, I'm Dracula. La, 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 la. Right. But you were, not, you were not going to try to dress up and be Dracula. You right. weren't dressing up and being Frankenstein like, okay, I'm a... With Vader, it was like, okay, whatever, before they before they kind of messed him up later, it's like, what is he? Is he a robot? Is he a, yeah. is, is he a, a, a guy in a suit? Like, what is Vader? Because you didn't really know. They never told you until, what, midway through Empire? Yeah. And then, even then, it was kind of vague until... Well, you didn't know if it was later. true or not. You know, it was, that was the mystery of it. Yeah. You know? And... <laughs> And, and, and this is a world populated with robots that are yeah. extremely uh, adept. Mm -hmm. So Vader could have been a robot. You didn't know. Yeah. He could have, he could, you know, Obi-Wan said that, or Ben said that uh, Anakin was killed by Vader. So you knew he was a, he was a badass. Right. Later, later on, you're like, oh, it was the same guy, but <laughs> like do those mental calisthenics, but whatever, dude. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to go too deeply into Star Wars lore. It was just like, but Vader was a costume. Yeah, Vader. Like if you like if you if you got voted that to be like you said, cowboys and Indians, cowboys and Indians could overlay Star Wars very easily. Oh yeah, yeah. If if you got if you got voted to be Vader, okay, cool. Then I am resident badass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will kill everybody except for the last man standing, and you better hope. <laughs> that you're a better sword fighter than me with our PVC pipes <laughs> or our sticks or whatever. Right. Um, Vader, Vader was somebody to aspire to. Right. It, like, it, it takes some training and it takes some concentration and it takes some equipment to be Vader. You don't just wake up one day and be Darth Vader. You, right. Yeah. And I think it's, like you said, is probably the mystery of not knowing is what made it so intriguing, too. Which, when you think about, I'm sure as we go along, some of our horror bad guys mm -hmm. that end up being people we root for, for the first part, it's always because of the mystery of you don't know enough about them. The mystery of it is what pulls you in. And then we end up just ruining it, just like we did with Vader. No. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I don't even want to talk about that, because Vader was such a, a, a an integral part of life to, it's like, I didn't care, like, who he was as a child. I wanted to yeah. know what those buttons on his chest yeah. did. It's like, okay, if it, like, is he fighting on level one mode and he pushed one of those <laughs> buttons and, like, went to level six and he's just a super badass? Well, obviously, because if you look at the way he fought in Star Wars and the way he fought in Rogue One, you're like, oh, well, he must man. have just hit a button and just, like, really 
just knocked it out of the park. Man, Rogue One. Which, I mean, that just it's just the best example of you know what he what he could have been throughout the series. Mm-hmm. Pretty awesome. Have and you it, seen that video of that girl watching the end of Rogue One? Yeah. It like and she she's she's crying at the end, and then the the extended scene comes on, and she's like, "What is this, dude? I'm watching her react to the." Sh- what's on screen and like i'm tearing up because it is that awesome the the end of rogue one was so good it's good yeah and it's like the same guys with the long backed helmets sure (laughs) like those poor guys had no chance no chance (laughs) it's so cool (laughs) and if you want to know what the what the box does that's on vader's chest just go back watch phantom of the paradise because that's where lucas kind of took that idea which was (laughs) which was the phantom's voice box right when he would speak it would light up and they kind of made their own little version of that and you know i I think lucas lucas has loosely said you know that was part of the inspiration for that so kudos to my movie man phantom of paradise it's the best (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> there, there, there's a lot of uh, it's funny because lo- love Star Wars like everybody else Star Wars is only as good as the sum of its parts because right. there, there's not an original idea in there it's just a whole bunch of really good ideas put together really well yep right <laughs> which was now jumping uh, out of jumping out of that my next bad guy that I actually was appealed had an appeal for was actually Gene Hackman as as Lex Luthor in the Superman movie cuz this was a oh, but because of the fact of growing up in the comics and watching Super Friends in the morning Lex Luthor was this cold stern matter of fact mm-hmm. guy but we've replaced him with Gene Hackman and you can't help but like him i mean as terrible as he is you're like <laughs> It's, I mean, he, he's, he, in my mind, Gene Hackman will always be Lex Luthor. I, I agree with that. I agree with that strongly. I think it's funny because I was never a big fan of Lex Luthor as a villain. Right. Very much. Because kind of like you said, like, uh, um, was Saturday morning cartoons episode where we talked about how Superman can just. Yeah. Do anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Superman could just breathe real hard, and Lex Luthor would just be like splattered against the wall. Yeah. So there, there's, there's, there's a whole lot of artistic license why Lex Luthor even exists. Yeah. In, in, in comic world at all, even through the fifties and sixties, not, not even now where they turned him into kind of a dark side Batman, which is really weird. I don't know if you've kept up with that. Well, I was gonna say, think of the whole idea of Batman versus Superman. It's the same mentality of Batman had to use his smarts to figure out a way to beat him same thing with lex mm-hmm. luther so i mean it's 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 just kind of a a, a, a prerequisite of, of being able to do that and uh yeah i mean that, but that's, it, that's weird how that's actually you can tell that's kind of the thought process behind that <laughs> but but stay on that superman's trip or superman uh super friends black manta Oh yeah, was always. Yeah, like Aquaman was never one of my favorite characters, but Black Manta was one of my favorite villains. I I oh, yeah. always ever, ever since watching Jaws, actually starting at Jaws three, backing it up to Jaws two, like <laughs> watching them in reverse. Um, because I I saw Jaws three first of all the wow. movies. I saw Jaws three. Crazy and um, living in my little house and in, in uh, outside of Corpus. We, we got cable TV, they hooked it up, they gave us the little uh, manual, and on the cover of the manual was that shark attacking the skiers, and I was like, God, I've got to see this, this is amazing, because <laughs> I love sharks, I was so, in, yeah. and we moved down to the, we moved to the beach, like there was a beach out there, and so I was obsessed, we'd go to the library, I'd check out every book on sharks, I was like eight, nine years old, I could tell you about how the biorhythms inside mm. of a shark's nervous system worked. Yep. It, it. I mean, like I could just quote it. I was so obsessed with sharks because of Jaws. Sure. Jaws three. I, I went. And, I uh, went through that too. And uh, so, Jaws three. Then my dad recorded Jaws two off of uh, cable. 
or TV off of Channel 13. Right. Like, <laughs> he, he, he he edited out the commercials for the first half and then, like, fell asleep. So there's commercials for the run. second half. <laughs> and uh, so, but, you know, Jaws attacking the, the, the bunch of boats that are tied together because oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then... We'll we'll have to do a Jaws um, episode because we, we, man, dude, I mean, we come can on, talk about Jaws forever, right? But man, we, so watch Jaws, love Jaws. The um, kind of lost my train of thought there, but <laughs> um, where did I lose it? Da-da-da-da. Black Manta, yeah, yeah, the scuba diver, right. Being being underwater, and like just his outfit, his yeah. wetsuit, he looked his cool. Armor, his yeah. his helmet, he looked awesome. And yeah. then I also thought because back then they used to show these pictures of divers, and they'd have these these helmets on, and the helmets yeah. would open up just to the front. But Black Mana had the, the big, big old sides. bug eyes. Yeah, he could be able to see the wide range. And uh, man. I was like, man, I want to be that guy when I grow up. <laughs> I really do. Like, what, whatever, whatever. Like, I don't care if he's a bad guy. Right. I want his, I want his outfit. I want his gear. I'm, like, I'm, I'm there. And <laughs> yeah, I, that's yeah. It, it's funny because when you go back and look at those, if you look at the lineup of the bad guys in Justice League or Super Friends, whichever it was, he was the coolest looking one as far as the bad guys, mm-hmm. hands down. I mean, everybody else, even, was, everybody else was just a bunch of ball headed dudes with electrodes stuck on their heads or, yeah. you know, you know, he was definitely the coolest looking. Well, even in the Aquaman movie, because I was telling my yeah. wife, because I, 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 we watched it just recently. Um, it's kind of funny because I love Jason Momoa. Don't get me wrong. He's, yeah. Jason Momoa is awesome. Sure. He does not look like Aquaman. No. The, uh, the guy who played Ocean Master looks like Aquaman. Right. And... That's, yeah. <laughs> like they should have switched them because Jason Momoa looked more like Ocean Master and right. Black Manta. But, but man, they did not skimp, even for a little bit on Black Mana. Black Mana it's, delivered. It's the best. He was, It's the best part of the movie. I'm just going to say he, that. <laughs> Black Mana was 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 yeah. awesome. And when he gets he gets busted up and he keeps coming back, and he's just like when he blows up his own helmet, he's like, I gotta get a bigger helmet. And he yeah. like makes the big knife. I was like, oh my god, yeah, that's my childhood right there. Yeah. Like because he was making this little tiny little helmet, and I was like, oh come on, because they do that in comic book movies, where right? They, you know it's what it's supposed to look like, but then they just kind of yeah, the shimmy pro- the, away. the process of getting there, you know, yeah, yeah. And that's, I mean, so, that's, that's, I don't have much good to say about that movie, but I, I did think, uh, uh, Black Man has looked, look, he looked really good. I, I enjoyed it, but I was still playing on my phone. Like, <laughs> like I, I just, was like, okay. This, I got real like, disconnected, man. When, when they get in the, the ship to go fast underwater, but it's still full of water, I'm like. What's the point of having a ship, right? I mean, <laughs> that, why, that same why does thing, it have I'm, glass in it if you're going to still be in when water? There's, <laughs> when they're supposed to fly as fast as Superman, but then they can't, so then they just get on a boat. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> like, I don't know. They, I, can swim, they can swim to the other side of the world, but then they get on a boat to fly yeah. to, the, to, to, to sail to the other side of the world, like yeah. to, the, to the trench. I'm like, ah, oh, what are you? I, I know. There's... <laughs> Anyways, this is, like, this is not an awesome episode. <laughs> we could talk about an episode of Super Friends for longer because that the the the, the thing that looked like Black Mana's helmet that, that was their base that came up out of the swamp. That thing is awesome. I want one of those, like a hydraulic base right? that just kind of floats up out of the swamp. And, uh, My next bad so guy. That, Maximilian from Black Hole. That's a good one. Scared the crap out of me, man. Especially when he killed Anthony Perkins. Man. I mean, <laughs> I, and I think that we're seeing a trend here, except for Lex Luthor, but the expressionless mm-hmm. looks the same when he kills you as if he's saying hi to you. 
which ties in again to our fascination with a certain genre of movies. Right. Um, right. You know, it's it's funny you start putting all these things together. Vader had no expression, only only vocally. You take the voice away, it makes it even scarier. You watch those old videos of uh, um, uh, David Prowse voicing oh, yeah. Darth Vader. Yeah, and it just—he's like a polite British guy, right. and it just yeah. doesn't—it just doesn't work. Right, <laughs> he's just like, you know, you're a part of the Rebel Alliance and a spy, <laughs> <laughs> and he's in Darth Vader's outfit, and you're like, dude, you need to have a cup of tea, right, and a big old mustache on outside of your respirator, like something's just not right. And then they get James Earl Jones in there, and he's just so—I mean, he's he. And, James Earl Jones has, has aged, and he's he's, ext- he's he's aged well, but even in Conan, like I was about to say, you want to talk about a good he, bad guy? He 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 just when he speaks, yeah, you listen, right, dude, dude. When you watch the Sandlot, the fact that they <laughs> cast Darth Vader in the Sandlot. As far as like the the untouchable zone, like that guy, the old blind guy that we can't talk to, right. with the with the mean ass dog, and like at the end, they're conquering Darth Vader. I mean, I, it was one of those things that like it took me getting older to realize, like, oh my god, they could have cast any old guy in that role, right. really. Yeah, but they put Darth Vader in there. Right. <laughs> like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> So what what comes to mind to you? Who who are some villains that from early on le- leading up that you kind of think or just stand out to you? Well, I kind of think I I kind of came up in the age of the villain because other than Darth Vader and excuse me with Boba Fett, yeah, Boba Fett you didn't know if he was good or bad. He didn't say anything. He had like like. 12 words through two movies and then he yep. croaked yeah so so but there's this mythos built up around him is he a good guy gone right. bad is he a bad guy who's worse like is That's... he just in it for the like yep. the mystery like who is this mm-hmm. guy yep um but when i was a little kid uh, like there's kind of the trifecta of bad guys it was, it was like skeletor cobra commander and megatron yeah from and three different toy lines that came out and i'm gonna say that of the three the one that grabbed me the most was gi joe because sure probably probably because of articulation you could do much more with those guys (laughs) and they had more they had much more uh yeah because transformers once you transformed them like they were a car yeah okay i've got cars you transform into a robot, their legs didn't move around right. because they had to be transformable. So it's like, it's a robot. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. With G.I. Joe, they actually could move and do stuff. Yeah, you could even, so even had elbows for the yeah. most part. I mean. It, like, yeah, you could you could put their gun out sideways. You could, like, yeah. point it the other way, like, whatever you wanted to do. They had all um, the joints in them like the Micronauts did. Micronauts are the mm-hmm. first figures that I saw that you could bend in all those ways mm-hmm. and you know that's yeah the great 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 figures not what we're talking about but still fantastic figures <laughs> well the, the well that's the thing is because you had again cobra commander I don't, yeah i don't know like i i was probably too little to really pay attention but it's funny because my buddy my old bass player my old band he's got he's got a whole bunch of old he-man guys and some mm. Some Star Wars guys and stuff in a box. I lost mine along the way. I've rebought mine. The wow. ones that I have, I've rebought. I don't have any of my old stuff. Yeah, he's got his old stuff, and I've kind of like nudged at him, like, "Hey, man, you want some of your? <laughs> you, know, you got some? You got some?" He he's like, "Man, I never got the bad guys. I didn't want to be a bad guy. I only got the good guys, or uh, you know, for whatever reason." I'm like, dude, I always like the bad guys because they're the like, I didn't really care too much about their ethics. They just looked cool. Sure. Like, Cobra Commander with that mirrored yeah. face. Yeah, that's it's like, awesome. That That is awesome. And, I don't know, like, I'm 
four, five, six years old. I don't know what a, a ruthless terrorist organization is. I just know no. that he's blue. Right. <laughs> blue with the face he's shield. Blue, and he's got pockets. <laughs> he's and, <laughs> he's and got his pockets. Gun, his, his, gun, his gun sticks sticks on, <laughs> on his back like a backpack. That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I mean, really, like you're you're not thinking about that. You're like good guys, bad guys. Okay, the blue guys against the green guys, whatever. Well, look um, look at both of our fascination with the mercenary, who is exactly what we're talking about, Boba Fett, right? Mm -hmm. Could be good, could be bad, don't know. But you end up liking them. Conan's a great example. Not a good person. Oh, <laughs> no, not not at all a good person. But but you know. Again, they they kind of show his backstory, and you realize exactly why he's, why he's not like a good he person, right? Yeah, but yeah, you think about it, it's like, oh, he's like S Superman kind of ruins it for everybody because everybody's like, okay, here's yeah. this symbol of good, and then you got Conan. They're like, dude, they cut off my mother's head, right? As Ooh. she was holding my hand, there there is no law. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna get you. That's how you get the Punisher <laughs> and all these characters that are a lot darker. Well, Batman and in, and in, in as just as well. I mean, he's 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 a little uh, mentally warped because of what he witnessed as a kid, and and there you go, you run with it. Uh, so yeah, it, it's funny how we are drawn to those. I mean, and and they be they become <laughs> the heroes, man. Uh, you know, I, I named a show after. A bad guy, right? The, the hell, yep. Ming, you know, Ming the Merciless. I mean, he's a bad guy, but you you love to hate him, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and, and, and in some of these, in in some cases, you almost kind of hope they win, which is weird. It's a weird story retelling because it's like, okay, maybe they're the bad guy, but um, I I, I read this book about Genghis Khan, like Genghis oh, Khan. Yeah. Is, Genghis Khan is, my God, that that was a thousand years ago, really. right? <laughs> you know, like, yeah, and and he's still, yeah, yeah. We saw Darth an Vader. We saw an exhibition on him back at uh, back in Nashville, back in the nineties, and it was, I mean, when you realize what that guy did, how much land he, I mean, it's just like, holy smokes. And he's one guy. Yeah. I mean, he had a lot yeah. of followers. Yeah. But but they they were all just hanging around, doing their thing, and he's like, hey, let's go that way. Yeah. And let's just kill everybody we see. Yeah. And like, that's, because th that, that's a phenomenon that actually happens. It's not it's not fantastical. It, I mean, it really happens. Yeah. And you know, Genghis Khan, Julius Caesar, all these like Alexander the Great, where they're just like, hey. I've got a really good idea and there's not anybody next to him that says, Hey, that's probably not a good idea. They're just like, <laughs> I, I've got a really good idea. Let's well, go that way. <laughs> your, your, your life expectancy back then was you were lucky if you made it to 20 years old. So, Hey, if I'm staying alive and I'm with this guy and I'm, and I'm getting food. Yeah. Hey, yep. I'll follow uh, you I'll, anywhere. Right. Yep. I'm, I'm there. Like, in, yeah, I'm not going to argue, but man, there's, there's a yeah. few of those people that are just, I used to be just enthralled with medieval times growing up till I got old enough to realize that there's no way I'd ever want to live then. <laughs> yep. I mean, of course, that's that's the uh, the Back to the Future thing, the Bill and Ted thing. Yeah, like, absolutely. Whoa, there's, yeah. Like, like as, as comedic as it is, Bill and Ted basically kind of skirt around and they're they're like grabbing random people who are in comfortable societies yeah and then as soon as they land in medieval times they're like <laughs> put them in chains and <laughs> cut off their heads put them in the iron <laughs> maiden awesome <laughs> like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's an episode for sure <laughs> i just spit on that that good dead meat <laughs> I love Bill and Ted, man. Yeah, and I, the fact that they're making a new one. Hopefully, the COVID thing doesn't yeah. cancel that. We'll see what happens was, there. That should be yeah. a lot of fun. Uh, let's see what else. Hey, David Lopan. I mean, how can you not? I mean, the fact that we that you can just say David Lopan, mm -hmm. and, and you and you automatically know, you know, from Big Trouble in Little China, 
a great bad guy that you love. You love David yeah. Lopan. I mean, <laughs> he's he's the, th- the funny thing is he's nice. Yeah. Like like well, the I, I can't remember the name of the actor that plays him, but but he's the he's the guy who is uh, ditching Seinfeld at yeah. the restaurant. Yeah. Um, his the way his voice is and stuff, and it, like like he's <laughs> he's the evil one, but he's also like Seinfeld able to like the way his voice is right he sound he sounds like a nice guy he's he's awesome yeah and uh <laughs> yeah i mean it's Scott just I, that's your perfect you know setup for a likable bad guy that you kind of you're kind of rooting for off to the side you know <laughs> especially with the three storms you know you gotta love all that Dude, we got we Scott and I did a fresh eyes, and it, we barely scratched the surface on uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Oh yeah, because 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 well, first of all, it's a Carpenter movie that sure. that is highly underrated. It's cult classic now, but there, like almost every minute of that movie can be discussed at length because oh, yeah. of what it means and how. how how weird it is and how great it is and how yep. bizarre it is. And like, you've got like Jack Burton is not a hero. Right. Like right. at all. He's just along for the ride. He yeah. just showed up and played cards and kind of got put, like, oh, yeah, I'll give you a ride, he, whatever. And then he's chief Brody. Yeah. He's just like, I don't know what I'm doing here, but Holy crap. And like when his, 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 Time to shine is to shoot down all the ninjas and put the gun <laughs> this way. And instead, he just shoots it in the air, and they're Knocks all like, oh. out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's and, fantastic. But, but having read the script and Kurt Russell just, yeah, like he, he's the star. I saw I saw a, a promo shot for that movie, and it did not have uh, uh, yeah, Wang with him. Yeah, I was like, nope. <laughs> like uh, he's got he, he's got to have. Yeah, Jack Burton's not the hero of that story. Absolutely. <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> the, and and the, I think that that leads to our fascination with the horror stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. your heroes that you cheer for, everybody, for some strange reason, you, you love Freddy Krueger because he's the wisecracker. Even though he didn't start off that way, it's it's amazing what he became because it's exactly what we're talking about. That infatuation of you want to know more about them, but we ruin it because we make mm-hmm. them too personable. And then the next thing you know, hey, we've hit the jackpot here because he's a good wisecracker. Oh, you can't hear me, you know that kind of yeah. thing. Um, we love Jason, right? Expressionless machine again. Yeah. Kills kills you just as easily if he's just standing there not doing anything. Michael Myers, same thing. So it's incredible how you can see those influences of what we grew up with and why we are drawn to those kind of things. Uh, yeah, and that leads all the way up to, you know, I was blown away when I went to theater and I saw Devil's Rejects because you end up caring for these three terrible people that get blown away in this Cadillac convertible at the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. That deserve everything they get, and you don't want it to happen to them. <laughs> That's mind blowing. <laughs> yeah, I, I and I'm glad it worked on you. It did not work on me. Uh, I was like, I was like, okay, um, they are horrible. He he invades the ranch and like kills yeah. all the yeah. all, you know the fireflies run. I was like. Get those, get them, get them. <laughs> they they suck. Like I don't care. I don't care if they're good at cuddling after all of this. Like they have ripped off that dude's face. Yeah. Like and, I mean, and it, hung him on the wall. Like they're, they're like this is bad stuff. Like yeah. I don't. I, I I didn't play in that. I was like, okay, I see where you're going with it, but yeah. I don't uh, like shoot them. <laughs> These but it, guys but it, suck. <laughs> it's that thing though. It's kind of like Texas Chainsaw Part Two. You know, you you've added a touch of human to these people and you end up kind of liking them to a certain degree, you know, well, I, I'm all, I'm all about liking them. Yeah. Like the, uh, like J- Jason Voorhees is one of those, like J- 
I talk about Jason, I talk about Friday the 13th. For Jason Voorhees and Friday the 13th, I think the reason I talk about them so much is because they scared, he oh, yeah. scared the bejesus out of me. Sure. When I, when I was a little kid, like, and, and the thing was, I could not understand why. Right, yeah. Why Why would Why would you just kill people for no reason? Like, what? what's... Yep. You know, tell me why, and maybe I'll care, or like maybe I'll be less afraid. But it didn't matter. It builds up in it, your it, mind even bigger than it really it, is. It, it, yeah, it became like it, it really just scared the hell out of me. Yeah. And later, um, I even talked to Kane Hodder. I was like, "Oh my god, dude! When I was growing up, I was so scared that you would just come through my window." He's like, "Well, you know, I never killed a kid." <laughs> He's like, J- Jason never killed a kid. And, and, and it was funny. I was like, okay, Not that he fair didn't enough. try. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> fair enough, Kane Hodder, who started in part seven. Right. But C.J. Graham, who was mm-hmm. Jason in part six, he had a moment where he was about to slaughter an entire bunch a of whole children. room. Yeah, a whole cabin full of kids. <laughs> <laughs> and then he got distracted. Um, Jason part two, yeah, like, part two, slaughter, yeah. slaughtered a dog. Yep. Like slaughtered all the, all the teenagers, whatever, but also killed the dog. And then like, right. we don't, well, part three was part three, but then part four. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Chasing J- Corey Feldman. I mean, ruthless. Yeah. And that's, I, that's I think, what, that's what the tall man was for me from Phantasm. Because it's that same thing. There's no reason why. Because he's chasing a kid through the whole mm-hmm. thing. Even though people are dying left and right, he's after this kid and there's no real explanation why. That got to me because I was a kid, right? Mm-hmm. So there's something, just like what you're saying, when, when you don't understand why they're after him, the purpose, and then you put a, an expressionless figure to that, it's every kid's nightmare. You know, we can't get back to Jaws. Like, oh, absolutely. Bruce, Br- yeah. Bruce is probably my ultimate... Like, I studied those sharks. Yep. We said earlier, I studied those sharks. I studied those sharks. Yep. Man, Mako sharks are fast. Oh, yeah. Bull, bull sharks are mean. Yep. Hammerhead sharks kind of bounce back and forth. Great whites are, yeah. are uh, opportunistic. Just like... Just, eat- Eat oh, machines, like, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and then you watch Jaws and you see him hit at Alex Kinter. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's just some kid who wants to to go out for one last run on his on his little thing, and yeah, yeah, just gone. And, <laughs> gone. and that's and that's probably another reason why you're such a Jason fan because Jason is just Jaws on land. That's all mm-hmm. it is. And so, am I rooting for Jaws? Kind of, because whenever whenever that dock gets pulled down, yeah. Whenever the whenever they're trying to catch the shark yeah. and the yeah. dock and the dock gets pulled down and those guys are swimming, of course I'm up here like this because, like, I don't want them to get eaten, but at the same time I kind of do, right? right. Because in jaw in Jaws two, whenever uh, the shark hits the boats and knocks the kids in the water. And the one girl like throws uh, Sean Brody up onto the boat, yeah. and then yeah. the shark comes up and like snaps her back and like pulls right. her under. I'm like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. There, there is. I'm kind of, I'm kind of rooting for the that. shark, but yeah. man, <laughs> yeah. that is rough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you even hear them talking about the second movie. They made him out to be more of like a serial killer kind of thing because it's mm-hmm. you know. That that's kind of the whole mentality, but you know, uh, yeah, we, we're gonna have to do a show on Jaws. There's no doubt the whole the whole set have uh, to. But uh, even 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 part four, dude. I saw that thing in the theater. <laughs> like I saw I saw Jaws Revenge with uh, uh, the the whole roaring shark. Rah, rah, <laughs> like what is? Yeah, my, my wife's my wife's favorite movie is Jurassic Park. And wow. I swear, dude, she's she's all about the dinosaurs. We're talking about the villains. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She was out of that. We, we, so, <laughs> saw, saw a meme the other day. It was talking about, like, oh, well, you know, you got, you know, the, 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 the state wants to reopen, and it's 
blah, 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 blah. But let me remind you that Jurassic Park opened five times. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So my wife has seen those movies, all of them. Mm. All of them. She's seen movies I haven't. Like, I like I didn't realize there was a part five or whatever. She's yeah. like, yeah. It was... And uh, <laughs> she's like, you realize, because uh, what was the 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 the, uh, the re-release one that came out like a couple of years ago. It wasn't the sequel. It was the the Jurassic World. Jurassic World, yeah. And it, so it's all modern and yeah. everything. Yeah. She's like, you realize that if they ever do this, we're gonna be like the first people in line, right? <laughs> I was like, dude, do those five movies or? Ten, like what? However many movies do not tell you that that's not a good idea. She's like, you still want to go cage diving with sharks? I was like, yeah. She's like, we'll be in line at Jurassic Park. <laughs> like, I, I don't care. I will take the risk to see the dinosaurs. I'm there. Wow. <laughs> well, I'll I'll be there with you, babe. <laughs> We're there. <laughs> I'm cool. <laughs> yeah. What about uh, what? A, and I'm just throwing this one out there, but uh, Tim Curry and Legend. That's a that's a pretty major bad guy that you can't he help. Is, but, you can't help but just be blown away by. He looks awesome, but he yeah. kinda, whenever it comes down to it, he kind of gets his ass kicked easily. Well, he's fighting over a unicorn horn, so how bad can no. you be, right? I mean, <laughs> but still, it's that thing of. <laughs> The, the 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 embodiment of total darkness, right? That's what they were going for. Yeah. Um, that's just one of those images Tim, that just stands out in my mind. Tim Curry and just about anything. Sure. Tim, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's funny. You mentioned Tim Curry because of uh, it. You know, yeah. The clown. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the the clown thing has taken off a lot recently, and I guess yeah, you know, four or five years. Uh, yeah, like oh, the poltergeist clown scared the hell out of me. Oh yeah, and then Tim Tim Curry's clown. Like, watch. I mean, I I did enjoy the the it movies that just came out recently. Yeah, and what? But but yeah nothing no there's nothing on that uh little doll sitting on that chair in poltergeist yeah like if, if you it's funny because if you if you, I, I if i thought about this like okay you got the stephen king it movie you got the stephen king it movie little doll like five <laughs> of, like 45 second sequence yeah, yeah scarier than both of those movies combined yep. To this day, my, together. my wife absolutely is terrified of clowns, and it's because of Poltergeist. Not even a real clown. Uh huh. Just a little doll, and just yeah. that. I'm gonna wrap himself around your neck and pull you onto the bed. Yeah. While you're chilling oh. on, on a Luke Skywalker. <laughs> that, I mean, <laughs> my my daughter. It's like, hey, can can I watch uh, Terminator? <laughs> no, you cannot watch Terminator. I'm like, I I almost kind of want to show her Poltergeist just so I can put her in her place. Because I was like eight or nine years old when that movie came out. And yeah. That was, that was rough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. Pol- yeah that, Poltergeist? That, that'd make her, uh, make her want to chill out for a little bit before she mm-hmm. decides to, to tra- tackle another movie. <laughs> and that's weird because that's a Steven Spielberg movie. Spielberg movie, that's a Toby Hooper movie, but... Well, yeah, that's questionable, right? <laughs> Could be Toby Hooper, but it really don't smell like Toby Hooper at all. Mm-mm. It's almost like, yeah, I want to put your name on here because I'm Steven Spielberg and I'm not supposed to make, like, legit scary movies. So yep. let's put your name on here, and but I'm still going to do most of it. <laughs> yep. Uh, I mean, as a director, what are you going to do? You're... you're... You're sitting there making a movie, and then one day Spielberg shows up and says, "Hey, I want to shoot a few scenes. Why don't you go yeah, uh, right. have some lunch?" Right. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue with that. You're yeah. you're the guy who made Jaws. That's right. In spite of everything. So. But at the same time, Texas Chainsaw Man. I mean, Toby Toby Hooper when when he when he does it, it's it's big. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, even Salem's Lot, man. 
you can't tell me, you know, the, the scenes in Salem's Lot, or they just stand out. Talk about another bad guy. <laughs> Barlow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Terrified me. <laughs> he just, he, he, he killed the kid's parents right in front of him. Yeah. Like, yeah. smashed their heads together. But not, but not near as scary as that kid floating outside the window, man. Mm -mm. That that's nightmarish to me. <laughs> there, there were so many things. I, 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 I going back to like Jason Voorhees. Like I, I remember my like laying in my bed, and the way my bed was situated, it was up against the window. So mm. bed up against the wall, window. <laughs> 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 well, well placed knife comes through window. Oh, right in the right head, right into my heart. Right, <laughs> like. <sighs> and remember the old Simpsons where Homer built him the clown bed. He's like, can't sleep. Clown will eat me. Clown. <laughs> I remember being being asleep, being like, if I go to sleep, this right dude's gonna. <laughs> oh man, it gave me panic attacks. I was, I, I was just, I was miserable because I couldn't sleep. Because yeah. the, this uh, window was there. And then finally, it is maybe just shock. I don't know. Call it whatever you want. Like, okay, if that knife is going to come through that window, it's going to come through there whether I'm awake or not. Right. <laughs> so I have to sleep. I just have to. I have to sleep. I have to go to sleep. Yep. There's nothing I can do. Then <laughs> That guy is so big and I'm so little. <laughs> If he decides to stab me, then I'm stabbed. Right. <laughs> Finally, yeah. I was like, and I think that was kind of my journey back into horror because I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna if I'm gonna get taken out, then I'm taken. There's nothing I can do. I'll stand on the roof and box Jason Voorhees and can punch my head <laughs> off into a dumpster. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just, I'll just leave. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so you were probably a little bit older. So did you have uh, play with Transformers, He He Man, GI Joes? You were probably well, th those were too little for me. Uh, okay. I grew I grew up with the uh, Six Million Dollar Man, Evil Knievel, uh, Shogun Warriors. Uh, that yep, was. Yep. That was kind of my my jam, uh, all the <laughs> all the uh, the Mego dolls back in the time, mm -hmm. you know the Batman, Superman, Spider Man, all those that came in the cardboard box, you know. Uh, but yeah, at, after that, that that kind of was past where I was. I was already you know into bands and you know buying docking cassettes by the time <laughs> nice. by the by the time he-man came out you know i was already becoming a miniature metalhead <laughs> yeah i i probably would have been too like if, if i could go back in time and just be like can i absorb all of this but <laughs> um like with we, we were talking about the bad guys to identify with so there was the gi joe yeah and there, there was storm shadow who's the ninja mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah just um, you, you saw my, uh, my anniversary gift for my wife, which is a butterfly knife. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, she was like, what, what do you want? I was like, I want one of these, but it's gotta be legit. Like I've got, <laughs> I've got my old like pocket butterfly knife that I used to have when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, I found it in a box somewhere at my mom's house. I was like, awesome. <laughs> I was like, oh wait, mo modern, modern people make butterfly knives okay cool i want one of those yeah so now I, now i have two butterfly knives one i've had for like 30 years and then one i've had for like a week um <laughs> but then like also storm or uh sound wave sound wave the transformer was oh yeah yeah it was a popular one he he was uh the the cassette he was the, mm -hmm. the so they, they did this thing with uh sound wave and megatron where when they transformed, they got big. So, like, Soundwave was a Walkman. Right. And when he transformed, he was, like, 30 feet high. Yeah. And as a little kid, you're like, I 
I'm not real that really good at math, but <laughs> it's, so, a, it's not that, really that a Walkman been, if it's thirty feet tall. I'm just saying. I, I just I just used to remember like that would have been one heavy ass Walkman. <laughs> <laughs> like, if, if it's gonna unfold into something that's that big, like uh, yeah. but yeah, like, oh, all the bad guys, the ninjas, the the darkness, the warriors. Uh, well, again, that's why we were drawn to, to all the ninja flicks, right? We wanted to be a ninja. I mean, you wanted to, you wanted that mystique of the the coverage of being skilled at something, but also having the secrecy, the unknown, right? That's <laughs> that's all that appeal of the bad guy. Yep. And I think if I could go back in time and change things, I would have been one of them. <laughs> I would have been a bad guy. I would have just gotten really good at karate and put on a black outfit and just been a bad guy. Like, <laughs> I don't. I don't know what I would have done for a living. I would have, whatever it was would have been bad. <laughs> I would have just been evil. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you, you think you think about like oh the, these guys are out there making heavy metal and it's just for evil and you think about these guys that are just like living in a trailer just being like i I just want to make rock and roll i don't know (laughs) but yeah i would have made evil i I would have been evil evil would have been my name i would have just i would have chosen evil i probably would have (laughs) mailed i probably would have mailed mailed them together because i'd probably be in like sammy kerr's band (laughs) right (laughs) right not necessarily be sammy because we know how that ends i mean you burn up right but probably be in his band and be like yeah i'm i'm you know with the the evilest you know, dead <laughs> rocker in history. So, uh, hey, I'm, I'm the, the, ki- the kiss thing, right? The whole kiss appeal was the mystery and the scary. You know, they're kind of scary, but they're kind of cool. Just, just like everybody we've just been talking about, it's that appeal. So, in the end, man, your favorite, your favorite guys. My, mine's gonna have to be Darth Vader, Boba Fett. I mean, there's, I mean. Boba Fett was me coming up. Darth Vader came out when I was like two. Boba Fett when I was like five. So Darth Vader and Boba Fett are my all-time ever baddest guys. Boba Fett was always kind of like, where you don't know where he's at. Right. Maybe a great character. But then, then in my age, I was hit with Megatron, Cobra Commander, Skeletor. These guys were not good guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe stupid, but not good. So, but they they also had all the best armor. They had the best weapons. I, I joked online the other day. It's like, well, say what you want about Cobra, but at least they put masks on their guys. Because if you look at the GI Joe guys, yeah, you're like, okay, well, there's gonna there's gonna be some explosions here. The Cobra <laughs> guys were like, <laughs> put, put on, <laughs> all our guys are in respirators. GI Joe guys are just. Eh. Hey. Just dudes, yeah. We can I got it. a helmet. I got a helmet on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's like I. I what? I what, think we. Yeah. What? What good is it if you don't have a good bad guy, right? I mean, that's in any story. They're there to make the good guy even better. Mm-hmm. And then it's and it all matters about how bad your bad guy is or how good your bad guy is. And I think all bad guys should be Christopher Walken. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah, just that, that, just that, weird enough and quirky enough to, to, to make it pay off no matter what he's playing. It, you, just, you just love him until he starts shooting up guys who are digging a hole for him. Right. Like, like, oh, <laughs> wait, wait. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So I think I think after the entire hour long episode, we've just decided Christopher Walken is the best bad guy. That, that's yeah. pretty much in a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I just I just work here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, make sure everybody listening. I mean, you know, post it on the Facebook page, on Twitter, Instagram. Who's your favorite bad guys? Who's your favorite villains? You know, if you could aspire to be a bad guy, which is a totally bad promotion that we're doing here, but if you could be a bad person, who would it be? 
<laughs> Dude, next week we're going to talk about frogs or something. Like, <laughs> we, we might talk about Sesame Street. You really don't know. Even Sesame Street had bad guys. Oscar the Grouch is a pretty oh, yeah. good villain. Like, Absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> check in in the comments. Let us know what what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. We may or may not agree with you, but we'll just not respond to that message. So just be like, oh, whatever, you know. But, uh, yeah, this has been You Know What's Awesome. We love you, and we'll see you next week. Adios. Adios.